It's the will of God that affects every single thing that we do and say. The will of God is our guide. The will of God is the principle by which all of us should live every single day. Doesn't make any difference who you are, but if you never ask God for direction in your life, what you're saying by your conduct, your attitude is, I can do without him. I don't need his direction. I don't need his help. I can make it without it. When you live day after day without consulting with God, asking, Lord, what's your will? What pleases you? What honors you? If I live day after day without asking that, what I'm saying is, I don't need him. Oh, you say, I wouldn't. I would never say I don't need God. Well, what about your conduct? What about your habits? Do you act like you don't need him? Or do you act like you need him? If you believe that God has a sovereign will for your life, which he does, if you believe what the Bible says about God and our relationship to him, then how do you go day after day without asking, Lord, what would you have me to do about this? What would you have me to do about this purchase, about this relationship, about my attitude, about my expense, about how I handle money, how I handle people? In other words, if you go day after day and you don't ask for God's guidance and direction, what you're saying is, I can handle it. How foolish. How foolish to think that you can handle life without God in the society in which you live or any society. And one of the interesting things I want to read in the scripture, here is Jesus on his way to the cross in the 22nd chapter of Luke. His ministry is coming to a close physically, and he knows the Father's will. He's been praying about that. He's been knowing it a long time, 30 years as a carpenter or somewhere thereabouts. And now he's been an evangelist, teaching the word of God. And verse 39 of the 22nd chapter says, and he came out and proceeded as was his custom to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. That's where he used to go. That was his place of prayer. Now, what is he doing? Because the cross is right next door. It's, it's coming the next day. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and he knelt down and began to pray. Listen to what the son of God is praying. Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. That is, is there any other way for us to purchase redemption for all mankind and escape the cross? Yet not my will, but yours be done. Jesus, who is the Son of God, was asking the Father, is there any other way but the way of the cross? The will of God is that which God approves and determines to bring about. It concerns God's choices of what to do and what not to do. Think about that. That which God approves of determines to bring about. It concerns God's choices of what to do and what not to do. When is the last time you said, God, what do you want me to do about this? God, what about my relationship to her or to him? God, what about my job? Lord, where do you want my kids to go to college? Lord, what about my relationship to this man or to this woman? Lord, what about where you want me to live? Lord, what about changing jobs? When is the last time you opened yourself up to holy God who knows everything and has your best interests at heart? When is the last time you opened your heart to him and said, Lord, show me your will. What would you have me to do? There are many people who don't think they need the will of God. They're living their lives according to the way they want to live it, but they're miserable. And many people are miserable and will not turn to God because they think they're smart enough to figure it out. Why do we have so much alcoholism and so much dope and drugs, sex and all the rest? People are looking for something to satisfy that inner feeling that they have. Looking for something that will make them happy. Looking for something or somebody who will bring them completeness when only God can do it. 
God didn't make us, equip us to live happily and peacefully and eternally without him. You're not made that way. We're made to depend upon Almighty God. And here's the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Is there any other way? Acknowledging his dependence upon the Father. And in your own personal life, how often do you ask him about decisions that you have to make? There are always going to be decisions. We either ask him or we don't ask him. 2 Peter 3.17 You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you're not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness. Any of us can stumble and fall. God wants us looking to him, depending upon him, trusting him, so that every day when you and I wake up, we should be asking the Lord to give us direction for our life that day. You don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know whether you're going to get to your job or not. You don't know whether your husband or wife will be home when you get there or not, or what kind of mess your kids are in college. In other words, are you living your life in relationship to God? Are you seeking his will, his purpose, his plan for your life? Are you just living it out and you call upon him when you feel like you really need him, when something has reached beyond your capacity to handle? God has the best will for every single one of us. He has the best plan for us. He doesn't keep it a secret. You don't have to do this, that in order to find out what God wants you to do. You need to ask him and be willing to do what he says. And yet, most people never stop to consider, should I buy that, should I marry him or her, and make decisions on their own without God. When Jesus, the Son of God, in those critical moments in his life, took a moment longer to say, want to be sure, is there any other way? And of course, the Father said, the way of the cross is it. So, would you say you live by the will of God in your life? Or have you decided that you can handle it on your own? Now remember this, because he's omniscient. God has a plan and a will for your life. He has the best plan and he has a will that fits you perfectly. Your talents, your abilities, your skills, everything about you fits what God wants to do in your life. You say, well, but I'm not as skilled as other people. Well, I understand that. There are a lot of things I'm not fit for. Lots of things I'm not equipped for. And, but you are equipped for something. God did not leave you out. You may feel like, well, sometimes, what does my life count? Your life counts. Because remember this, when Jesus died, he had you in mind. He had every single one of us in mind, had the world in mind. You say, well, that happened 2000 years ago. Well, why does he say where to pray to him and talk to him now? Talk to him daily, listen to him, asking for guidance because God in heaven is listening. He wants to hear from us. There's not a single aspect of your life which you should just erase from your relationship to God. We need him about everything. You need him in your marriage, with your children, with your job, with all that mechanical things that happen in your life. All of us need him and to go day after day and not read his word day after day and ask him for direction and guidance in your life is to say, I don't need him. Oh yes, I need him. Well, when did you get on your knees and talk to him? When did you plead for God to give you wisdom and direction? When did you have to make a big time decision and you said, well, Lord, I'm not going to make this decision until you show me what to do. Or did you just go ahead and do it without him? Almighty God wants the best for you. There's nowhere in the scriptures that you can find that God doesn't want the best for you. But are you asking him? Are you seeking his direction? That is his will. Or are you asking for something else? Now God doesn't judge us by comparing us to other people. He has a plan for your life. It's not the same plan as other people's lives. It's different. And you may say, well, if I had another chance, I would do thus and so. God doesn't make any mistakes. You won't be like someone else. You want to be like what God intended for you because the only real genuine peace and joy and satisfaction and a feeling of being a complete and satisfied is a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Without God, you can't make enough money. Listen, when you're living in sin, you can't do anything until you deal with the sin problem. And this is why there's so much of all the other stuff that we're talking about. God loves you. He has a will and a plan for your life. You say, well, I'm 55 years old and I just got saved. What's God's will? He takes you where you are and listen. He knows how to overcome your past, erase all the mistakes. No, but what he'll do is enable you to overcome the mistakes, enable you to get a different view on life, to enable you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ that will amaze you. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody sins. Everybody has fallen their times about some things. God wants the best for us through the last day of our life. Isn't it interesting what God has to do sometimes to get us to think and to think wisely and to think soberly and to ask the right questions? God, what's your will for my life? How often do you pray for your children and grandchildren and pray, God, show him your will for his life. Show her your will for their life. Don't let them marry the wrong person. God, help her to marry the right fellow. And sometimes grandparents and parents need to get right in the middle of their life.